The encouraging word for today will come from Luke chapter 21, verses 34 through 36. Jesus says here, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. In this passage, Jesus tells us, Watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. He promises it, promises that to us. He says something very similar in Matthew 24, 42 through 44. He says, Watch therefore. For you do not know the hour that your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Again, Jesus says we have to watch. Both of those passages start by saying, Watch, you don't know the hour that your Lord is coming. Matthew's interesting because he he adds there, If the master of the house knew what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched and he wouldn't have allowed his house to be broken into. And that that is such a great picture of the way we'd respond if we knew that a thief was headed to our house and we knew the time that he was going to show up, that we would take all kinds of measures to protect the house, to protect our loved ones in that house. And so Jesus says, you know, just like that, be ready, always be ready. The, 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 the trick to it all here is that we don't know when. So the obvious is always be ready. This warning is repeated in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But I want to share something with us as we look at this picture. Jesus says, I'm coming. The Son of Man is coming. Be ready. But if we're not careful, there can be a discouraging message in this promise from Jesus. Think, think about it this way. All through the years and past generations, Christians who believed in God and dedicated their lives to being ready for Christ's return, they were ready their whole lives, and he didn't come because they've passed on. They've left this life. The question is, were they tricked into believing something that never happened? Honestly, were were they tricked? They were told to be ready, and they were told that Christ was coming, and they didn't know when, but be ready. Were they tricked into believing in something that never happened? The Bible's answer to that question is unequivocally no. They did not waste their time. They were ready, and that's what Jesus told them to do. They died in faith. They gave their lives in service to the Lord, and that's what was required of them. Paul refers to the faithful who have passed on as the dead in Christ in 1 Thessalonians 4. And he says that they're going to rise first and be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So the fact that Jesus didn't come during their lifetime doesn't mean that he lied to them or that he tricked them. The Bible is crystal clear about the dead in Christ shall rise first. And their their eternity is secured uh, as they pass from this life. Paul says this in Romans 13 and verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Peter will say this in 2 Peter 3, verses 2 through 4. Be mindful which the the words that were spoken by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And he goes on later in verse 8 to say, But beloved, speaking to Christians, Beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." There are going to be those, and that, that's why this challenge is here and the warning is there, that he's still not coming. And, and yet, you know, on Sundays, some preacher standing up in a pulpit saying, you better have your life together. You better be ready for Jesus to come. He could come at any moment. Now, how long would a congregation willingly listen to that statement? Uh, it, it does spur you on to, to do something, to be ready. He could come at any moment. Okay, then I need to be ready. 
But don't don't you see with me that they the congregation could be worn out by that and, and that scoffers would come eventually, as Peter warned. He says scoffers will come and they're going to say, look, things have always been the same, just like they were uh, when our fathers were here before they fell asleep. But Peter says in that chapter, be careful because God promised that the earth would be destroyed by water. And in his divine long suffering, he waited throughout the days of Noah, but then finally destroyed all flesh. And he did it on a day that he determined and no one was told, not even Noah knew the day. He was just told to be ready, just like we are. So it's a very interesting picture there. James tells us the same thing. Be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand in James 5 and verse 8. I want to show you something else that I think is very interesting as you read through the Bible concerning the day of the Lord, uh, the day of judgment. In 1 Thessalonians 4, which I mentioned just a minute ago, in verse 15, watch, watch the way Paul speaks about the coming of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from the heaven from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. I want us to see here, it's very interesting the way Paul writes this out, because twice in that passage he says, we who are alive and remain. He's talking about the judgment day. The day that this happens, the dead will rise first, and then we who are alive. This tells us that Paul doesn't know the day either. But he's anticipating it's coming. And not only does he preach, you better be ready, the day is at hand. He's living it because he's saying here, we who are alive and remain. Paul believes, to the extent of the truth that's been given to him, that Christ will come during his lifetime. That's what he said. And yet Christ didn't. Does that make Paul wrong? No. Because God's long-suffering extends way past the life of Paul and all through the lives of all the Christians who have loved and served the Lord. You're not tricked. It's not a mistake. You didn't waste your time. The reality is you did what God asked you to do with your life. To die in faith is such a blessed privilege and a beautiful picture of someone who loves God, who walked through this life learning how to trust Him in the good times and the bad and learning more and more about him and who he is and how he works and about his great love. That when you go into those golden years, there's peace. You still know who you serve. You still know who you love. And his word is right there in front of you all the time to say, I am coming. Stay vigilant. Be ready. I want to read one last passage for us for our encouraging word of the day. It is found in Titus chapter 2. And just just think about the coming of the Lord and again, the commandment from the Apostle Paul uh, to live a certain way and and, and how it's given to us by God. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Paul says we are looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And and tagged on to that is, You know, it's like, well, is he coming or not? Because we're all looking for this appearing and it hasn't happened. The tag is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us. So Christ believes the day is coming because he died in order for this to be accomplished. All of heaven will move when God the Father says so. The challenge for each one of us as we look at this and as we live in this life today is watch, pray, and be ready.